Bali Sally, not far from the center of Coleraine, home to almost 3,000 people, many out of work and on benefits, all trying to keep their heads above the rough economic water. This is the story of a year on the estate. Today is Emma's day. Emma, can we just go on after you? Emma, you have screws up behind you. Usually she's found looking after alcoholics on the estate, but today she's taking a break to get married. I just think, my goodness. Oh, I didn't think it would happen. I don't know. I don't feel like it's just weird now I'm not going to be Emma Kennedy anymore. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Jim is one of Emma's success stories. A uh, couple of days growth there. Probably need a machete. Her first client on the estate, she's been working with him for nearly a year. Can't really get much brother. That's uh I need a towel. The girls helped me so much, like, God, if, compared to two years ago, I'm a changed man, man, I could have been dead, for God's sake, if I hadn't met that girl. She's the best thing happened to me in a long frickin' time, man, she's saved my life. With Emma going on honeymoon, Jim will have to battle alone to keep the drink at bay. I just, I don't know, I couldn't live in an absolute tip, I just can't do it. That started whenever I had Shea. Single mum Emma's waiting for a delivery. She's bought some wood for a new fence. But yeah, my neighbours are thinking, what the heck is this woman getting delivered now? Like, there's no way I could leave this just sitting in my backyard now after all this. Definitely have to get it put away now. Not because of where I live, but I think just in general you couldn't leave something like that out, you know. Fresh wood. <laughs> That'll be high enough to keep the good in and the bad out, won't it? <laughs> Emma just needs to find someone to build a fence for her. Yeah, I've got the stuff, but how long is it going to set my house for? Really loud. Too bad. Unemployed joiner Noel's dropped in to see Kyle. Yep. Oh, you can't get a fucking dog. You can't look after your fucking shell. Yeah, dog. Kyle's bought a new dog called Poppy to keep him company. Oh, well, it gives me something a bit of responsibility. Mm. Like. Mm. It's not so good whenever it's fucking up. Early hours in the morning, you hear it getting up off its wee bed, its wee cushion in the room. As soon as you hear it getting up off it, you have to be up like a shot and take it out. Oh, it's obvious. It's obvious. Oh, wings and wings. Push on them. Push on them. Wings and wings. What's wrong with you? Take a wee fucking terrible. To give him something to do, Kyle's joined Noel's band. We'll get a week or two, and then we'll maybe start band practice then. But with band season over, boredom setting in. Denise has taken time off work to bring daughter Lauren to hospital. This is before she was even born, yes, just what, what we wanted to do. 
Can I take um, Stad and see what he's doing? And they sent this this guy, I remember they sent this man in and he started to talk about terminations. Terminations. So there was just no way. Because we'd waited for her for so long. And there was no way. That wasn't even Mommy, that wasn't can even you an option. Show me. Can you show me how to God. get the mess to text messages? Lauren was born with spina bifida and needs regular medical checkups, at least one appointment a month. Today she's having her kidneys checked. No, 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 this has to be done. Well done. That was better. Hmm? Well yeah, done. Good. There. Yeah, that's sore now. Is it sore? Yeah, my left arm. Which arm's sore? That one. No, there. Yeah. As a parent, you'd rather have the pain or the discomfort yourself rather than putting her through it. Yeah. Hmm? If only. If only we could do it that way. Can we go back in for some lunch? That's my ma. This is me in Donegal. My dad was born in Donegal. Now that's a fine wee boy. Blonde hair, the life in front of him. With Emma away, Jim's still managing to stay sober. A couple of years ago, I couldn't hail that like that, you know. He struggled with alcohol most of his adult life. You don't realise you are an alcoholic till you, you actually had rock bottom. And it's not a nice place to be. It's a very dark, dark place to be. Jim's drinking reached crisis point after a bad breakup with a girlfriend. I was looking for help, but... I uh, never got further than the first bar, <laughs> really. There'd be always that thing in the back of your head saying, go on, take me drink, but no. I'm going to make this my first year without a drink. It's good now. When I get a year, wow, the world's your oyster, I reckon. So look at that there, look at the beautiful sky. Today, uh, like I actually get the whole morning to myself. So, like I go to work, that's very uncommon. That doesn't usually happen. It's hard to think it's probably silly, like, and you're going, you're living here and going surfing and stuff. Not a bad life. All you'll see is me falling on my ass. Emma moved to Bally Sally with her daughter Shea after her marriage in Canada broke down. And that's how it goes. Emma never fully reaches her potential. Whenever I left Canada, I lost everything. Car, savings, money, everything. Job. You know, and yes, I did come back with Shea and that's awesome, like. But I learned my lesson, I'll never do it again. After months on a waiting list, Emma was eventually given a council house. Three years on, she's just beginning to settle into life on the estate. I was a wee bit worried that I would have horrible neighbours, you know, that they would party a lot, that, um, you know, Shea maybe wouldn't be a good situation for Shea. Yes, I'm surrounded by kids and, and other families, but maybe it's not opinions that I want my daughter to have, and that would be something that would concern me, but not as much anymore because I think it's more so up to me now what she's exposed to, no matter where I live, where it's in Valley Sally or not. Right now, I think a fence in my front yard. I want to know who's talking to my child. Not, I don't want my three-year-old to be running the streets at four or five. Even, you know, I want her in a controlled environment where I can supervise her, that I can see who she's playing with, where they're from, who their parents are. Before, that maybe seems a wee bit oh, over the top, but to me, it, it's not. Are you going to 
ring, what's her name, and drop the pounds. Okay. Now we'll go and look at this first. So. Jimmy and Denise are among the few on the estate who both work and own their own home. But they need to move to a bungalow for the sake of their daughter, Lauren. I would like to move so we'll go up. Yeah. Because I'm always narcot going up them stairs. I'm going to make any car I want you out of this. So mm -hmm. there's me car living. They've found a house in their price range. Hello, I'm phoning about the house in Korean. So I'm looking to get a few in for it. But it's not ideal. Is it a repo? Some people are funny Aww. about buying repossessions. We really need a bungalow, so... Too bad. Their own house has been on the market a year, but there's no sign of it shifting. We need to move. She's getting bigger and heavier. And those stairs are killing us. It's just the waiting, 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 waiting for somebody to come along and... Yes, we love your house. <laughs> Here you are. Here's the money. I want a move house today. You'll be lying in the house doing nothing. Or else you could be out here fishing, something to do. It's boring lying in the house for so long. Kyle's been unemployed for three years. You have some good weeks and then other weeks are fucking bad weeks and you've no, no money at all to do nothing. You can't even get out fishing because you've no money. So kind of fell out by not having money. With plenty of time on his hands, Kyle is starting to regret a squandered youth. I've a brain in there somewhere, but <laughs> I just never really stuck at school too much to stick around and get my grades. So. It sort of holds you back in the job just. I kind of regret it now, like. Still kind of grades, like, even if they were crap ones. I was down signing on there Friday. Uh, a couple of jobs were there, but you need it. Too many GCSEs and stuff for them, which I don't have. Um, so there's only one other one, that was McDonald's. So I thought I would try it. It's not something I would have like really like they went for before. Sometimes takes starting off on a crappy job to end up getting a good one, so you just have to persevere with it. Money's money. If you're earning it, it's better. If you put your mind to something, that's achievable. You know what I mean? Jim's still off the booze. And now he feels strong enough to tackle the smokes as well. Wallpower, that's what that's what it takes, you know. I'm gonna roll a cigarette. <laughs> you can't start the patches to tomorrow anyway, you see. And there's very little tobacco left. In fact it's dust. <laughs> John Wayne used to roll them on the horse and do it by his uh, you know, one handed roll. I used to be able to do that, but I can't do it anymore. The drinks made me shake too much. <laughs> but uh, the doctor says the shakes might never go away, but, you know, they're not as bad as they were. Yeah, tomorrow. I went for an interview in McDonald's and like he says in the interview like there was probably about 200 people in for it but he said he'd be let me know because there was ones in with degrees and stuff for it and like they have to look at it as if them boys are only going to stay there until they get something better um, so they were kind of looking at an average person for it and he says he'd get back to me I think it was three or four days after it, and uh, never heard a word. Despite this setback, Kyle's not giving up. I was a lawyer in the clinic about two or three years ago, and the place went bankrupt, so it put me out of a job. And before that, I was a still director as well, so but it was 
It's too stressful working it out. I can't really go to anything too stressful because uh, my anger problems, like, I can't listen to anybody shout at me too much. Yes, I can get told what to do, but I can't listen to somebody down your throat all the time. On this. They're all temporary. If nobody wants to come off the door on their temporary job that you're only going to be at for a couple of weeks and then you have to wait another 13 weeks to get back on the door again, it's stupid. It'd be nice to get my freaking quarter back, I'm telling you. Emma's finally found someone to build her fence. Thanks a lot for doing this again. I've been, it's been a struggle trying to get someone to do it. She hasn't had to look far. Noel from Two Doors Down has offered to build it for her. I'm gonna take this opportunity to bond with my neighbours. Sure looks like he knows what he's doing, doesn't he? There you are. Hey, you. Doing a good job there. I always do a good job. Uh, do, do, for all other people, you uh, get nothing done. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what about that? You get nothing done. You're a bad man. She looks after you well, hey, doesn't oh, she? Oh, I know she's well. That's amazing that he only had three boards up like less than two minutes ago, and now he's like up to ten. That's going to take him no time at all. He's so easy to work with. He doesn't make you feel like, you know, he's doing you a big favour either. He's making it seem like it's nothing, it's nothing. But it's just time and effort and he's the one sweating the bit out there for me too. How many next door neighbours will come to your fence for you? What money? Hey, I'm enjoying a bit of like that. Why do you never go into like business for yourself, do you enjoy it? Not enough. Really? It's going to be so nice to let the way in out and not worry about her beelining or being in my neighbour's house or something. It's just better this way, it really is. You have three new Well, that's not too bad. Three? Yeah, I thought it was going to be like ten. Emma's honeymoon is over. I'm married now, yep. <laughs> That'll do. Well, sure, I'll speak to you then later on in the week, okay? Bye bye. And it's back to business as usual on the estate. <laughs> okay. Hello, hi. Hello, Mrs. Uh... Jim's had a setback in his battle with the booze. So are you still on the antibus, not on the antibus? Oh, I found it. Oh, I can't sure I've been drinking, Emma. Have you? And are you going to stop? This is definitely it. Mm -hmm. I can't Because you're looking really well. Paula, do you, you know. think so? I think I look fucking awful. No, I think you're looking really well. You, I th <laughs> you look great. You do, you're really? looking really well. I yeah. thought sort of I looked terrible. No. You're looking really well, but then you're feeling terrible, Jim. This is definitely up. It's a big step for you, you know, to recognise, right, this is enough. So when can you start your auntie? Just then Thursday or something? I have no idea what day it is. Neither did I, just don't worry. See, when you're off a couple of days, I was thinking it was Friday there for another day. A lot of the people I work with have absolutely no one and would have had nobody until I came along and although maybe yes they're still drinking they're just maybe not drinking as much or they're doing we extra things that to us we just get up in the morning and just do like cleaning the house or even just personal hygiene and just small things like that it's good you know going out and at least you know you're helping people <laughs> just an open yard. There's no gates. It's not exactly high enough to keep a cat in, let alone a three-year-old kid. So this 
Obviously, three foot pants will definitely keep her in. It's not like I'm putting cages in the windows. <laughs> then I'd need some serious help, but I'd be devastated if anything happened to you. Emma and her Canadian husband were expecting another daughter before Shea, but there were problems with the pregnancy. They sent me away for testing for Down syndrome and it came back positive for that. So they didn't know what the outcome was going to be, whether she was going to be disabled mentally, physically, whether she was going to form correctly, all that kind of stuff. It took a long, long time for it to sink in that there was actually something wrong. I think I was just a bit naive. I was just so excited to be pregnant. Despite doctors' advice to have an abortion, Emma continued with her pregnancy. When her daughter was born, she weighed just two pounds. They called her Emily. She had red hair and she had brown eyes. Blue, I don't know, it was kind of hard to tell the colour of her eyes because she was premature. And she was really, she was quite, she had a good length on her. She, she's quite tall like she is. So it just like, just like a normal baby. It was on the fifth day. I said, we think your daughter's going downhill. Do you want us to carry on with treatment or let nature take its course? I really regret the last few hours of like her life because they took her away for like a CT scan and they were moving her and oh, it's just so unnecessary. Like instead, I should have been sitting there. I should have been sitting in the rocking chair with the wee and where we blanket around us and sitting cuddling her. And you know, I didn't get to do that. That's a bit shy. We bathed her and dressed her before she was sent off to the crematorium and stuff, but that was horrific. You know, I, sh I had one opportunity after the C-section was done and they took her to the special care unit to hold her, but she had so many chips come out of her and everything, and I just, I said, no, I can't, I don't know how to hold her because it's my first baby and all these chips and stuff, and it's so just overwhelming and you, you don't want to hurt them like oh. I guess that's things you got lovely it's those choices sometimes I guess like I might be a wee bit OTT but I don't think this is over the top they didn't come all this way and do all this and have a second opportunity with my daughter to kind of mess it up now Denise and Lauren are back at hospital. Which number was it in? First door now. Walking is getting harder for Lauren. She's in line for a new wheelchair. Right, let's see. Where's your belt? Where is it? Oh, there it is. There we go. And you'll hear the click. So just you try pressing that and see if it's open and okay. Great. All right, now you're going to have to push a bit harder than that to get over the lip. That's it. Whenever you go up the town now, who's going to be pushing the wheelchair? Me. Good, good, good. Who's not we'll going to be pushing the wheelchair? Daddy. Yeah, it's good. Much lighter. Much lighter. I prefer the wheels on this one. I'm putting stickers on that. Justin Bieber stickers. <laughs> I remember we have a slope, so let's see how you do. Ooh. Control it now, control it, Lauren, control it. <laughs> what was it? I controlled, can't do, was it? I can't do it. <laughs> that was a bit bad. <laughs> You're going to do a lot of pushing on your own this time. I'm trying to flip. Yay! You did it! Look at that. You've only just got your new chair and already you can flip. Good. Good car. Mum, I want to do it again. One more. And we'll get you in. There. That was brilliant. With Lauren's mobility getting worse though, the need to move house is becoming critical.
Things are looking up for Kyle. He has a new girlfriend, Annie. So I started chatting through Facebook. And then she was down in Korean every now and again, so we just agreed to meet up. Annie's convinced him to turn his back on his bachelor ways. Just sort of uh, the most down there person you ever met. There's all the other wee girls right every weekend and slotting about and whatever and constantly at your throat and won't let you do nothing. Basically what he's trying to say is I'm faithful. He can trust me. Yeah, it's all about trust. I can never trust anybody. I'm 23 and she's 16. All my friends have been settled down for years. I was always the girl that liked to go out and party and enjoy myself and not get settled down, but after a while that started to get a bit boring. Well, yeah, I used to go out every weekend and party and not come home day, maybe Sunday or the Monday, but as uh, the last couple of months, I haven't even really been drinking the last couple of months. Most guys that I've been with have been cheeky and eager and don't really care, oh. but it seems different. Is that actually nice? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe how quickly you did it, to be honest. Now I know you're a carpenter, you're done for now. <laughs> I've got a curtain pole I need to put up to you. Aaron, curtain pole, you're the expert. <laughs> you get me two hinges and a lock. I'll have your wee gate on the morning, I'll have a whole lot done. Sweet. Shea has arrived to inspect Noel's handiwork. What's he doing? What do you think she is? A big and tall. You try and climb that fence now, missus. No. No, no, get off that. Yes. She'll hardly break it. <laughs> what do you think? It's pretty. Is it pretty? I bet you that's just what no one wanted to hear. It's pretty. <laughs> I think we got the thumbs up. The box. Next time on the estate. I'm just glad somebody's coming to see the house. Try and make the house look a bit, you know, neater and make the rooms look bigger. <laughs> We've so much junk in this house. We're hiding it in my car. Okay. I'm not all right, dear man. Well, be okay, well. I'm a Stanley knife in the house. Got the jugular the fuck. I better not do that. I have so much hair spray in my hair. <laughs> I bet it was down in place too. And there's more from the estate next Monday at 10.35. You can catch up with previous episodes from the series on the BBC iPlayer.